Hello and welcome once again to another episode of ADV Podcast. Which it's one? episode 39 right. this time and we're going to have a lighthearted one because let's be honest, everyone's kind of dour these days with everything that's going on in the world. Uh, so yeah. I think uh, <laughs> also it's a little bit of a celebration because we just hit 69,000 subscribers. Nice. So big, big nice over there. <laughs> yeah. Big nice for that. Yeah. And we are going through some materials. We had some very, very sinister crap that we came came across. And we deleted. We didn't delete. We moved into another note. And we said, let's just do something silly today. Yeah. But also kind of serious because you'll learn a lot. Yeah. We're going to be talking about all the, uh, well, some of the funny bloopers that have happened on Chinese media mm-hmm. over the years and that still continue to this day. But let's just... Crack on with what's new. What do you say? Sure. So what's new is when we talk about what's new specifically with regards to China. Okay. So I guess the first topic we're going to talk about, it's not very funny, but it is interesting nonetheless. Why don't you take it away? Uh, You guys might know this uh, dapper, very handsome, charming fellow on the left. Mm -hmm. Um, By the way, I highly recommend anyone that doesn't know who Jack Ma is or Jack Ma Yun, please look up Elon Musk and Jack Ma. And watch the interview, or sorry, I should say it's almost like a conversation yeah, that yeah. Jack Ma has with Elon Musk. Uh, highly, highly recommended. It gives you a lot of insight because Jack Ma is one of the most powerful people in, in the world. In the world, yeah. Well, in China specifically, he is in charge of Alibaba. Mm-hmm. You know, he's started that and all that. So he's incredibly rich. He's got a lot of influence, and people look up to him. Everybody looks up to him mm-hmm. in China that I know of. Um, and they even go as far as to saying, yeah, he may not be all that handsome, but he definitely is kind of handsome in his own he's, way. He's like the Chinese success story of basically mm-hmm. that you don't need to do anything to get wealthy other than cheat and have connections. And have connections. He is the poster boy of that, yeah, right? Yeah. Thing is, he got a little too powerful, and recently he's been under a little bit of fire. He is in the Communist Party of China. He's got very favorable ties to the CCP. Sure. The problem is... You can't challenge someone's rule like Xi Jinping or something no, like no. that. You can't get too powerful no. under a dictator like that. You can't. So uh, Xi Jinping actually just took away $35 billion IPO yeah. from them, right? Basically saying that like it's a, it's not a startup company anymore, right? Yeah. They don't need all this extra funding. And it was a huge blow because it, it kind of showed Ma that it doesn't matter what you do, mm-hmm. you will eventually be a victim of the CCP if they think that you're a, a threat. Sure. Not even a political threat. You're just too you're too much in the public eye, right? Yeah. yeah. So they actually put this out on state media. And this is kind of fascinating. Um, you can explain that this yeah. is not an original painting now, first. The, if you look in the background behind us here, you'll see there's this picture of the sky with a horse. It's actually kind of a cloud-shaped, mm-hmm. or a horse-shaped cloud type thing. It's actually a very famous Japanese painting by a Japanese dude, which it's is kind of crap. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't like it at all. But I think it's quite ironic that uh, Chinese state media would use a Japanese painting when they d- detest Japan so much. You yeah, know? they yeah. couldn't even make their own one. No. Anyway. Um, so anyway, mm. this is the reason this is interesting is uh, Ma Yun. Ma Yun is his name, Jack Ma. Yeah. Ma means horse and Yun means cloud. Yeah. Right. So you can see there's a horse cloud like you explained in this painting. Yeah. And what this actually says uh, in Chinese, it says, don't speak thoughtlessly. And then the second part was cut off here. I have it written down. Um, it says, don't do anything that you want to do. Don't do you, do as you please. Yeah. Uh, people cannot act on their own free will. That's all this said, yes. right, with this picture. Which was a clear, clear jab at Jack Ma, Ma Yun. And it pretty, much, this picture. pretty much also said, you are just a cloud. Yeah, you're just a cloud. You're not, you're, you have no power. And yeah, and a cloud that can be blown away. Yeah, it can be blown away, but, which is yeah. pretty crazy. By the way, we have this little bet going on. You see all this light, yeah, this yeah. light on, on Seamilk right now, there's a couple of bars. We want to see if it actually reaches his face and starts annoying him by shining in his eyes. <laughs> right, because I said we should shed it, and you're like, I don't think it'll go anywhere. Yeah, but we'll, we'll find out. It's who... clearly going somewhere. <laughs> Let's find out. Anyway, sure. just, just a little friendly you, bet. Where'd your light bar go? I blocked it all away. Oh, okay. I've got <laughs> stuff like cluttered on my desk. Anyway, guys. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it, it's Cloud just, horse. it's very important to know that you just cannot get too much power in China. And there are lots of proverbs about this. Mm-hmm. It's not just communist China. It's no. been like that forever. Chinese culture. And the whole the nail that stands out gets hammered down type thing is really a big thing in China. And the opium poppy, yeah. that, like whatever. Yeah, Isn't that, that a thing? Um, there's tons. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> here's a, a fun little thing that happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. The Global Times, as we all know, is uh, the... Chinese state-run media, the English version that goes out there and 
they are such a vile newspaper, or it's not a newspaper, like a media um, outlet. Anyway, let's read this tweet. It says, the more hashtag Canada tries to hide, the more it will expose, sparking more suspicion and making more people realize the true essence of Meng hashtag Meng Wan Zhou's case. Some Canadian politicians accuse coercive diplomacy, but they remain silent on Meng's case. So, um, oh, those good old Zhao Lijian are favorite. Yeah. So th- the thing is, can you tell me what's wrong with this tweet? Because they attached a picture. We'll give everyone about five seconds. Just look <laughs> at it real hard. I posted this on Instagram yesterday and people made some hilarious jokes. They kept saying it was another place. Like, yeah. hey, that's not, that's not Canada. That's England. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, New exactly. Zealand. <laughs> yeah. So basically what they've got is they've got a picture of the Sydney Opera House right. to represent Canada. And I mean, it, seriously, by the way, thank you, uh, Slick Sims. He's the guy who told us sure. about this. He tweeted it at us and he saved the, the screenshot as well. Before they took it down because yeah. they did. Of yeah, course. exactly. But it's so ridiculous that, by the way, this is related to the, the Princess Mung case that's going on mm. at the moment because they, her lawyers are really trying to find a way to weasel through a loophole to say that it's the FBI that did this or that or whatever. So, of course... Again, showing that Huawei is not a private company, but actually the CCP's, you know, company, spy organization, whatever you want to call it. You see the Global Times state media attacking an entire country because of a court case against somebody, a proper legal court case against somebody who is just a CFO of a company. You know what I mean? So it just proves once again the ties between Huawei and the Chinese CCP. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, this is not Canada. They said they warned Canada. It's like a warning to Canada. Like, how dare you? If you keep trying to hide, we're going to find more type thing with a picture of the Sydney Opera House. I know to most Chinese people, all of us foreigners look the same, but you've got to realize that Canada and Australia are two very different places. Even though the majority of your corrupt officials live and own property in both Australia and Canada, they are actually two different places, guys. Get that right. They, won't, they don't need to. I, for me, it's more of a bargain thing. They get to save a little bit of money so they don't have to license photos because mm-hmm. think about it. Not only because the biggest enemies right now of China are, are Canada and Australia. Yeah. So what you do is in use your words, you get to attack Canada, but then you also get to attack Australia with a photo. Bam, bam, two for one deal. Buy one, get one free. Oh, maybe. Next yeah. time they should just put all the countries in there. Uh, agreed, agreed. Uh, anyway, let's move on, shall we, to our next little uh, slide here. Um, okay, so... Please, please. Sure. So ahead. Huawei, just to, to tie things all together, that, that uh, garbage Chinese brand that makes the uh, terrible electronics. Actually, they make good S- stuff, but it's all... Some, some of it. No, it re- is, really. Like, I, I got to be honest. The, the quality of the products that they're putting out these days are good. Yeah, and but I'm not, I mean, I'm not you can't lie. charge the same amount as a Samsung or an iPhone yeah. when it's worse, sure. by and okay. large worse, right? This is true. But like I said in my... I did a whole video about this. All of their technology is based on lies and deceits. They've stolen all of this technology. Nothing but a cloud, really. And they've, they've built up their capital, and now they've reached a point where they can start to do their own R&D sure. and stuff. But all of that money and all that capital is built on basically knocking off, stealing, and theft, and subterfuge, and Correct. all sorts of crap. So it's let's call it an immoral company. Okay, that's what we'll say. Because they, they do still make crap, but they also make high-end stuff, which is not crap. Sure. But they're immoral. It's an immoral company. Okay. And they sell to Iran under sanctions when they're not supposed to, and that's right. why their CFO gets you Huawei, know, arrested. Huawei, the, the thief company yes. that steals their technology. I prefer, to make their, I prefer okay. that. Uh, the CEO who has been caught multiple times using iPhones, which is hilarious. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. You think you, the CEO, look at this freaking guy. Like he knows anything you remember about Remember the, the tweets where it was like, uh, Happy New Year, Huawei, whatever, celebration, right. and it's like sent from sent my from iPhone. iPhone. Actually, and when they arrested that Meng Wanzhou, she had a, she had a stuff, yeah. Apple laptop, she had an iPad, she had a well, it kind of shows an you, right? iPhone. You know, she had one. Okay, Huawei maybe I was phone. maybe I was harsh when I said it's crappy, but let's be honest. If their own peep employees of their company can't even represent the brand, yeah, it says something. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Anyway, no, Huawei CEO claims that China is the number one chip manufacturer in the world thanks to Taiwan. Now, the reason <laughs> this is a thing is because. Mm. If America is cutting off chip supplying to China, they're having a really big problem. This China does this all the time. Like, if you have an issue where there's uh, food tariffs, they'll yeah. say, "Look at us. We have the most food in the world. We're sure. totally fine. We're self-sufficient. We don't need food imports." Yeah. Basically, anytime you see something that's a little too good to be true in yeah. the propaganda department, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing at this light. It's, cr- <laughs> it's, it's creeping. It's creeping it's up. Coming. Yeah. I thought you were laughing at something else. No, no, no. So, so, but yeah, I'm laughing at out. something else. Which you're you're going to find out tomorrow. It's hilarious. Yeah. Don't you worry on my channel. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Mm. 
basically when you see something in Chinese propaganda, it's too yeah. good to be true. Yeah. You can just immediately know that there's a problem. Yes. So yes. It, when I read this headline, I know that there's chip problems for China, right? But sure. also at the same time, the hilarious part of this is because China claims Taiwan yeah. is not an independent country, but part of mainland China, it allows them to use the statistics of Taiwan's chip manufacturing to put into the Chinese chip manufacturing stats. So actually it becomes number one in the world. Well, they're, they're good at cooking the books, but it is bizarre because everyone knows, you know, Taiwan for all intents and purposes is a different country. It's a di under a different government, it's different economy different yeah. trade in fact, that was my video that was your video it is a different country and it's a little island so what he's basically saying is that the entire of mainland china which is huge with all these provinces and all these sophisticated cities and factories and stuff actually suck really suck at like chip manufacture but because of this one island that actually has nothing to do with mainland china suddenly they're the number one chip producer in the world yeah nice nice little uh it's exactly like that analogy we came up with, remember? Right. It's kind of like taking uh, your crush and then photoshopping her into a picture of yourself, putting it on the wall mm -hmm. and saying to all your friends, this is my girlfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's literally what I did in my video. Yeah. If you so guys want to check that out, go check yeah. it out. Cool. Someone is calling me out because I did a Huawei tablet review, by the way. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah. And I can't I, remember. And actually, I think that's where my negative, my negative impression comes from because it was so bad. Oh, yeah. You did. Didn't you... Um, didn't you give it away? And yeah, stuff? that's because yeah. it was... It was I mean, oh, it dude, was I did, dude. Um, I did uh, reviews of Chinese phones. I went and bought Oppos and things like that, and I gave them away to subscribers. It was a different time, Yeah, you know? Um, back without trying to sound defensive or anything like that, but back in the day when we were living in China and you're living in a, in a situation where um, iPhones and things were just coming out and very mm. expensive and you could get these cheap sort of alternatives in Chinese manufacturers, which yes, based on theft and knockoffs and all that, absolutely. But it was a, a kind of a wild west of smartphones and For tablets sure. and things and they're people were exploring. They were, they're, but they're exploring different things. And you know, it was interesting. It was an interesting time before things got political, you know, so different times, but yeah. The reason this slide is up is because uh, the previous article that we talked about Huawei was mm -hmm. on Taiwan news. And I just made front page today with my video. So yeah. if you guys want to know why Taiwan is a independent country, go check that out. Absolutely. Yeah. That's um, cool. Continue. Yeah, we're getting there now, now that we've uh, advertised our things. Okay. I think it's time for us to move on to our next section, but we sure. should take a, uh, a, a super chat or two because, guys, we've yes. got a fun one coming. Yeah. This light's getting just going to cut my neck off, dude. It is. It's Let's getting find very out. close. It might shift, though, to this it, it side. It looks like it, uh, you might be okay. Yeah. We'll find starting out. starting to feel the heat. Stop placing your bets. Start. We'll see you not get like blinded. Kind of stripes on. Will we get blinded? I'm uh, blinded by the light. Yeah. Rubbed up like a two-stroke. Uh, yeah. Winnie the Pooh, mm -hmm. what do you think is the real end goal for the CCP? Just survival yeah, and it's ultimate power. Just, uh, ultimate? just yeah, <laughs> ultimate power. Yeah, it's all about growing their control and power. You know, Of course, if they can... I mean, they, they want to gain this power and control by showing everyone that they can accomplish big things. But unfortunately, the desire to accomplish big things overrides the happiness of the people in China at the end of the day, unless you're rich and connected, which is the, the problem with it all. You know? Sure. I mean, all well, top down heavy handed policies don't usually benefit the, the large yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you can you, you can stuff. think, you know, like Mussolini and Hitler sure. and Stalin all had the same idea yeah. too, you know? Yeah. Very Everyone true. can say, oh, they wanted to, you know, improve everything for the people and all that. But look at how, t how it turned out. Exactly. Mm. Uh, case closed, 93. When you lived in China, how did you save money long term? Obviously, you didn't have 401ks, but did you save somehow? I just put a little money here and there. It's incredibly easy to save money in China because money, uh, I mean, cost of living is so cheap. Getting it out is yeah. different. I mean, it's it's definitely different depending on the lifestyle, okay? Because, yes, I know a lot of people are paying huge amounts of rent to stay in a nice swanky area. And they live a foreign lifestyle, so they go out to these expensive restaurants that cost you like 400 RMB a night, mm. you know, when you go out with your, just a, a friend or something. But... Like, especially in the beginning when I was in, in China and I had no money, it was actually very easy for me to save between sort of 70 and 80 percent of my salary because mm -hmm. rent is really cheap um, if, you, if you're willing to drop your standards a little. Yeah, okay? a lot. Well, a lot, but okay. Rent is fairly cheap. Uh, food is can be dirt cheap if you want to eat garbage. Sure. Okay, and let's face it, when you're younger and you're out there and having fun, you don't really care yeah. that much. Agreed. So you can eat some garbage food real cheap. And so you just get to save. So it's all about savings. And 
savings is also a big part of Chinese culture, which rubs off on you when you're there. Mm. If you've got a Chinese girlfriend or whatever, you learn habits from them. And it's all about saving, saving, saving. So you, you get to save. Most people in China have more money in the bank than most people in the West. It's just the way it is. You'll have a street sweeper in China that saved a decent amount of money in the bank compared to like a, your average 30 something in the West. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Agreed. Anyway, Agreed. that's how it is. Yeah. Uh, we'll do one more. Bengal sure. Tiger, New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, Winston, people talks about racial tension in South Africa, but I was curious if you as a South African know what the situation is in Namibia with their black and white population. So compare Namibia to... Yeah, South sure. Africa. I mean, look, I've got my godfather um, is from Southwest Africa, uh, now called Namibia, and uh, lives in Vintuk. And uh, it's, it's definitely better. You know, it's, it used to be a German colony. It's got a completely different sort of... Uh, a vibe there you know it's, it's very different to south africa where racial tensions are very high um and people do get along better i'd say in places like namibia there's less problem because it's not as politicized you don't hear about uh namibia and racial tensions do you but you always hear about the anc and the eff and kill the farmers and all that kind of stuff that's a kind of a, a south african rhodesia uh, zimbabwe thing you know but I'm not saying it doesn't exist. There are still huge problems in uh, Vintuk, but it's just way less. It's a much friendlier place if that's what you're getting at, really. Cool. All right. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on to our main thing. Now, guys, Soft Power Hour is where we talk about uh, how China is trying to change your mind, usually through um, overhanded and underhanded sort of things, the media, that kind of thing. And today we're going to talk about the media because it's kind of funny. And uh, it, like we said, it's a lighthearted one. So let's get on to our first little thing. Do we remember lovely old Liu Xiaoming? We do remember Liu Xiaoming. Um, he is the Chinese ambassador to England, or the UK, I should say. Yeah. People always get mad when I say England. Yeah. yeah. UK, sorry. Yeah. Um, and we know, we know we already covered this, but yes. there's a reason we're bringing it back up, because the Chinese ambassador to the UK, when he gets caught liking a pornographic tweet... It is the fault of the evil Western powers. Yes, absolutely. And we wanted to compare him to the, uh, you see, uh, China demands Twitter inquiry as ambassador to UK likes a porn tweet. Remember that? That's... Embassy claims anti-China hackers behind vicious attack on Liu Xiaoming's account. Remember, a vicious attack is liking um, yeah, a foot if, fetish thing. If you, <laughs> if, you are a China, if you are a hacker trying to take down this ambassador's account, the only thing you do would, would be to like one picture <laughs> yeah, exactly. on Twitter. Yeah, it's That's vicious, what you would vicious anti-China forces. Yes. Uh, but now we're going to look at the complete opposite, which is now the British ambassador in China, Chongqing. in Chongqing, right? Um, if you haven't heard about the story yet, uh, a young student was drowning, hmm. almost dead, unconscious, floating down the river in front of literally tens of, like, at least 100 people there, right? In so, this yeah. tourist spot. It was if, a you, lot, if you look at the footage, there's at least sure. like 100 people around there. Nobody jumped in to save this girl. And this is a problem I've talked about in China, in China before. It's a big societal problem because people are too concerned and worried that they're going to get blamed mm. and sued. Mm. There's, you can also say it's bystander effect to a certain degree, Definitely. which I, I, I hate it when people always blame it on bystander effect because, you know, this proves that wrong. Sure. Bys okay. Bystander effect is rampant. Yeah, China. it is. It's a huge thing. And also people just don't want to get involved because it's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this, um, for lack of a better word, a cowardly thing that happens in China when somebody's hurt. And you hear it quite often, you know, like a, a young child will get run over by a car and people just walk past as, you know, they're dying mm. there and then they, they die. Or st it happens all the time when somebody who could, could have been saved, you know, collapsed mm. in, the, in the subway or something. Mm. And they could have been saved if somebody just stepped in to help. Mm. But people just ignore them and they die. So that's what was happening here is this woman fell in the river, a student, young, young woman. And she was about to die. And this elderly diplomat jumped in. British, you know, British guy, obviously, jumped in um, like and 70, saved 75 or something? He's, he's an old man. Older, yeah. But, okay, this is something that I've noticed because I've stepped in myself a bunch of times in China when there's mm. been someone who needs help. And it's always the foreigner jumping in to help somebody, which is kind of um, embarrassing for China, mm. and it's a loss of face. So I pointed it out on Instagram um, that, you know, like, this, this is a sad reality in China. It takes an old foreign man 
to jump in and save somebody who is in need, where you've got literally tens of, if not a hundred young, healthy, you can look at the picture here, all these people are in their 20s, uh, and you know, thereabouts, young, healthy, local Chinese people, and not one of them jumped in to save her. Yeah, I, I heard a bunch of counter arguments that this is collectivism and has nothing to do with, uh, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's a collective culture. You would see the same thing in other Asian countries and that's bullshit because if you look at any social experiments, mm -hmm. if you compare Korea, Japan, Taiwan to China where they yeah. do where they drop something or someone needs help, it is wildly different how oh, things yeah. happen. Yeah. Everyone will, st a lot of people will step up to help in those countries. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about Taiwan, which are, is Ch are Chinese people, right? Yeah. That will go out of their way to help. I've noticed that people yeah. helping me. Yeah, they the do. Street in Taiwan. But then you have this, again, not to say bystander effect, but in China, it's just, it's it's not the, the culture. It's not a deficiency of the Chinese people. No. It's literally down to government selfishness. It's yeah. what you learn when you're living in a cutthroat, selfish society. Absolutely. And it's, it's built into society through the you know all the policies like you say of the government but also those past cases where people have been successfully sued for helping that, someone, that too yeah helping an old person and then they are the ones who have to end up paying sure. for their medical bills and sure. stuff so people don't want to get involved but whatever whatever the case is it sparked this very interesting argument with both chinese nationalists and yeah and uh western uh sinophiles and sympathizers sure. and stuff with me first of all the the first thing everybody said was well it's because most Chinese people can't swim. Mm -hmm. And I have to actually um, say that that is true from my experience, that most of the Chinese people I met cannot swim, mm -hmm. which was a bizarre thing to me. You know, when I used to teach, it doesn't matter which level, I, I, I taught all different kinds of age groups and I taught businesses and doctors and everything. One of the things I that, that always struck me was, first of all, how few Chinese people have broken bones. Mm -hmm. And secondly, how few people uh, Chinese people can actually swim? Because I'd ask that in the class classroom. I'd say, how many of you can swim? And there's a class of 50 people. Like two or three people would put up their hands. And this was bizarre to me, especially since Shenzhen is on the coast. Mm -hmm. So you've got the sea is right mm -hmm. there. You know, there are rivers mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, and very few people could swim. But also the lack of broken bones, because I guess it's the sh kind of childhood of being shielded by the grandmothers mm -hmm. and you know, study also is more important. Up in apartments and, and stuff. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, not like, I, I broke my collarbone a few times with mm -hmm. a rib, and, you know, we're growing up climbing, climbing trees, riding motorbikes. Because we're messing around outside. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, the, the fact of the matter is, yes, okay, so a lot of Chinese people can't swim, but that's still not a good excuse that no one even attempted to help. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Next thing is, is they, they also start saying, you don't understand how dangerous it is to try and rescue a drowning person because, you know, they're flailing around and you will drown yourself. And then they start linking to articles of how yeah, other people that. have uh, drowned trying to save people and stuff. So basically what you get is you get this defensive nonsense where people are basically telling you, don't, don't try to rescue someone who's about to die because you might die. Hmm. It's very selfish. Hmm. Okay. Don't try to rescue somebody because, well, we don't know how to swim anyway. Hmm. It's all this nonsense, all this justification. But at the end of the day, there is no justification for not trying to help someone who's about to die. She was unconscious. She wasn't even flailing hmm. around. She's floating like a piece of garbage down the river. Hmm. And it got me thinking a little bit because there was so much backlash. And I was thinking, well, what about this? Let's look in the background. Our famous... Is that a Snickers bar? Looks like oh. a turd floating in the river, to be honest. Oh, it's Chairman Mao. But our famous Chairman Mao, as we can see, is an incredibly strong swimmer, as you can tell <laughs> from, from this footage here, this very famous footage of him swimming. He sparked a revolution, <laughs> more than one, okay, in China. But he sparked this kind of let's all learn how to swim revolution yeah. in China, as you can see. Because he made it very fam famous or very popular to swim. And I was wondering whatever happened to that. Why is it that Chinese people don't swim these days? What's wrong? What, what went wrong? You know, because he inspired a nation to learn. There's definitely how to a swim. resurgence. Like, I agree with you that the majority, mm. uh, like my wife didn't know how to swim properly. But yeah, my wife doesn't um, know how to swim properly either. The wealthy, I've, I've since taught her, but the wealthy generation mm, of new of new people, it's definitely taking off, especially in cities with pools. Mm. I had a lot of clients that were swimming. But yeah. anyway, it wasn't because of Mao. And actually, it's very fascinating. I read a ton of books on Mao. Uh, my, my favorite one is his doctor. Yeah. He would always recommend that uh, Mao wouldn't go swimming in these rivers because they were so polluted and so dangerous and right, bad for his right. health. But he loved it so much. And he 
thought it was a very important part of his propaganda campaign. Yeah. Right? So he pushed swimming like crazy, and I guess that just died off eventually. Yeah, I know. So anyway, it's just kind of interesting. So you can juxtapose... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, there's a juxtaposition. <laughs> hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. Wait for it. Why is there no audio? Is the audio cut out of that? No. That's annoying. It's supposed to be audio. Anyway, we're disappointed. Is what we're trying to get at here. Okay, we are very disappointed. Yeah, we're we're disappointed with the uh, fact that the 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 ambassador, the Chinese ambassador in the UK, is such a piece of crap that likes foot fetish stuff and then blames foreign interference powers of because he, he liked to it. yeah but then we have the uk uh ambassador in Ch- in chongqing saving people's lives right and by the way uh very big um heartfelt thanks for him being an actual human being to step forward yes because um very often i've been disappointed by humanity when i'm in china it's so so disappointing and it's it's good that he can set an example because his actions actually made it into like the Global Times, which, as we know, the Global Times just hates the. Well, worst. I mean, the internet like yeah. ran with it, so they can't hide it, right? Yeah. I was most impressed with his reaction. He didn't really take credit. He yeah. was like, you know, I, I had a lot of help afterwards, and this kind of thing happens, yeah. which shows he's a humble and nice person. Yeah. Which is nice. Instead of blaming the actions of hostile forces when you accidentally look at porn and like it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Own up to it, brah. Yeah. You know, we also have to own up to is that we have jackhammers outside yeah, our window. It's not my jackhammer. Ah, it's like we're I back can, in I China. Can, I can shut it. May, maybe you can take care of your light thing, but that, well, that's... it'll ruin the bet. But at yeah. the same time, it's getting really annoying. <laughs> what, what was the bet? What is the bet? I don't know what the bet is. Anyway, um, <laughs> bear with us for a minute, please, if you don't mind. Shut up. There we go. That's better. Oh crap. This, by the way, proves, guys, that this is live. Wait, did, did we need... I think the super <laughs> chats prove that. Okay, doesn't matter. We always get people... That's not live. Uh, I think that joke's over. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, because we've proven it too many times. Yeah. So, anyway, we're back on track. All right, so what's next? Okay. Uh, what do we got? Okay. <laughs> All right, so... Um, I'll just run through this super quick. Okay. Was it German? It was Germany, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, put out this uh, congratulations type of tweet to Biden and Kamal Harris. Mm-hmm. And basically, it says, um, we're going to work together now. Uh, Europe and America is going to be a good team, all this kind of crap. And we have to basically acknowledge that China, there's issues coming out of China, mm-hmm. and we can work together to deal with them, right? Yeah. And everybody knows that. Like, China's the worst offender of climate change, is the worst offender of, of human rights issues, mm-hmm. more or less. Yeah, China right now. Capita. Right now, yeah. Um, with all these things happening, and at least if, uh, with a new presidency coming in, at least maybe uh, Europe and America can start a new chapter or some bullshit like that, right? Sure. Anyway, go to the next one. Okay. Uh, the next slide here. On the top here, oh, sorry. sorry. Let's go back. Uh, sorry. On the left here, yeah, it was the German uh, Foreign Minister he- Heiko Maas <laughs> yeah. on the presidential election in the United States. Benign tweet, but it did involve a little bit of uh, shitting on uh, China's issues these yeah, days, right? Yeah, yeah. And rightfully so. And Chen Weihua, which is uh, China State Affiliated Media, mm-hmm. he replied, the fucking <laughs> mass. <laughs> which, yeah. let's explain, okay? Yeah. This guy's last name is Maas. Maas, yeah. Okay, this is German dude. Yeah. And this struck us. We've looked at this so many times, and we just keep dying laughing. Yeah, because w- for some reason, when other people, like non-native speakers, use swear words wrong, yeah. I just die inside. It's the funniest thing in the world. And the fact that this diplomatic tweet yes. got a diplomatic reply from a Chinese government employee yeah. that said the fucking Moss. <laughs> Like, in reference to his name, is so delicious to me. I mean, he, he probably just wanted to say, like, fuck you, man. Yeah, that's that's what he's... I mean, it, yeah. it would have been funny enough because yeah. it's so in poor taste. This wolf wanker diplomacy Yeah, stuff. I know. And I guess in Chinese you say, like, uh, like a tamada, you yeah, know, yeah. like... Ni tamada, yeah. Ni tamada mas or whatever, but, you know, so... Tamada mas would make sense. Yeah. That actually would have been funnier. Yeah, which just means, like, that... that piece bastard, of shit yeah. yeah that bastard fucking you know, moss but the fucking moss is really funny <laughs> the fucking it reminds me you know moss. it reminds me it's, it could be hilarious anyway um i was on my e-bike right and i was riding in shenzhen and there was like a, a kind of a traffic jam and there's a bike lane okay then the road i was on and i was riding and this uh 
this guy and woman in their car, they basically try to get into the bike lane to mm. skip the traffic type thing. And I cut them off because I'm in the bike lane. Sure. And you know me, like when someone tries to do that when I'm around, I don't let them. No, off. you're so, like a shepherd. So, so I basically like didn't let them in <laughs> and they kept trying. And then I just slowed down so that they <laughs> couldn't. Course. And I went with the, the, the traffic flow so they couldn't get in, you right. know. So the, the lady rolls down her window and she just shouts. Yeah. Shit! <laughs> no, it's, like, it's something about the misuse yeah. of swear words that yeah, just really, tickles my fancy. It's really, really funny. And it's just ten times better when it's an actual diplomat. Yeah, it's a diplomat. It's this, just... th- these wolf wanker toad <laughs> warrior guys, this is China's <laughs> government. This is this how they is behave. How they, this is how they work. They, lo- they look at porn on Twitter, which is banned in China, yeah. like it, yeah. then blame the rest of the world for hacking them, and then reply, under the same vein, the fucking mops. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's like eight-year-olds. It's quite quite ridiculous. This is there's more of these though. Oh, yeah, there's more absolutely. of these. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go back in time for yes. some of these. And we like we said, this is more of a uh, a fun thing. Yeah. But the foibles and all of these hilarious mistakes, um, some of them are very recent, and yeah. some of them are gonna be ones that we want to bring up before we start a YouTube because yeah. we remember these this kind of stuff. Yeah. And we made a list of like things that we remember as being hilarious. Yeah. This is uh this is I think trying to view a Xinhua, I believe. Yeah. 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 It was a huge newspaper. This is back in 07. Mm-hmm. They uh, they did an article about genes genes splicing or testing for multiple sclerosis. Yeah. So it's something about a cure, right? Yeah. And they literally used a picture of Homer Simpson. Yeah. As the brain effect. It's supposed to show like how the brain is affected. For yes. Multiple, yeah. They literally used Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah. And that just shows you, and we can kind of explain something with this, mm-hmm. the Chabadoa. Yeah, China half-assed did. aspect, like good enough aspect of everything. And when people think that China, and excuse me if I go on a monologue, but if people try to think of China as going to be the next world power, mm-hmm. they have to understand that everything, you might see these grand skyscrapers or grand bridge projects or whatever, but everything at some level in mainland Chinese society is just half-assed. It's just yeah. chabadoa. So the chain of command allows too many mistakes to happen, and there's yeah. no accountability. It's just the last guy gets shit on. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's not really a, a neural network of things. Right? Sure. It's like this guy says to do something, and it trickles down. Money is 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 corrupted out into the other channels. Things are bought. People like translation is lost, and the job ends up getting absolutely screwed. Yeah. And that's how you end up with mistakes like this. Like literally Homer Simpson's it's picture it's here. And and uh, here when Kim Jong Un was. Uh, you know, the onion, you know, the onion is yeah, just like, it's a, uh, it's a parody satire, yeah. satire thing. They made this fake article saying that Kim Jong-un was rated like man of the year, sexiest man alive. Sexiest man alive, yeah. And the People's Daily ran with it as if it was true. <laughs> the People's Daily, the big one, <laughs> yeah. the big newspaper of China. And the funny thing is, is like they ran with it and they wrote this huge thing about yeah. it. Yeah. About how he's so handsome and the way he rides horses and all this kind of stuff. And finally, the West is waking up to how influential politicians like yeah. people like Kim Jong-un because are. Because they read an Onion article and actually thought it was true. But that's that's how Chabdo, that's how half-assed China stuff works. I can understand how that works because there was something that I found quite bizarre when I was living in China is that uh, many people would say Mao Zedong is handsome. Yeah. Now, there is, there is <laughs> the a difference. Slide. There's a difference between being um, charismatic mm-hmm. Um, of course. Which he was. Yeah, he's a charismatic and handsome. He's not a handsome man. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Okay? Sure. But I'm talking about the... I, it would be a this picture... This is an interesting it, cultural point. Yeah, they, it would be a picture on the money. And sure. the picture on the money is is maybe about as flattering as they can make him look, right? Sure. But I they would it. say... Yeah. They would say, oh, he he's very handsome, but a little fat. Right. That's the you know? literally a quote. <laughs> yeah. Literally a quote. But yes, um, so I guess that's why they could fall for this fake article about Kim Jong Un being the sexiest man of 2012. Yeah, and I think that brings up some a good anthropological point, and yeah. that is, it's more important in China to go with the narrative, the collective narrative, than anything else, right? So you look at Chairman Mao here in this picture, and if I asked. Uh, especially someone of the lost generation, like, what do you think? They would say he's handsome. Now, why yeah. would they say that? Well, it's because they've been told to say that. Yeah. Whether they actually believe that or not is not relevant. It's not important because there's no individual character characteristics of your yeah. mentality, right? Yeah. So I brought this up before, but you can have a supermodel, like a six foot six supermodel guy, mm-hmm. like tall, dark, handsome, a little bit, a little bit of, what's it called? Stubble, Stubble here. Yeah, he's yeah. got eight pack abs, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 
but he will be let if you ask someone he will be less handsome than a blonde hair blue eyed guy he's like that's fat like, he's not well, maybe chubby not fat. he could be chubby or he could be really lanky and yeah. like kind of weedy and stuff sure. like this he'll be less handsome than he won't be less attractive Sure. Like the women, a woman, like a woman, if you did like brain studies on her, she's going to find the other guy more attractive, sure. right? But when you ask them who is more handsome, it's going to be the blonde hair, blue eye guy because they've been told yeah. that is what a handsome foreigner looks like. Yeah. It baffled me every time when you get groups of foreigners that would be teachers or a business meeting or something, and they'd all say, oh, look at him. He's just so handsome. And they're talking about somebody that objectively, if you were talking about in the West, yeah, wouldn't yeah. be handsome. You're just jealous they were talking about him. Oh, no, dude. Not you. <laughs> no, absolutely. Oh, I'll, no, but yeah. no, I agree with you. I I'll agree. be honest with you, though. No, <laughs> yeah. flip that on its head. Yeah. I've been that guy that was more objectively handsome to them mm -hmm. than the the maybe a darker guy from Mexico yeah. that is much, much better looking than sure, me. True. But I'm getting much more attention than that guy because in their mind this is what a foreigner is supposed to look Absolutely. like I mean, it's, it's all about yeah. that scale yeah. it's it's fascinating to me and yeah. that's how the, they end up making articles like literally taking an onion article yeah. and thinking it's dead serious i know it's kind of ridiculous power is handsome yeah that's them. right power yeah. and, and control okay <clears throat> now do we have to talk about this one this, this is it's got to be one of our favorites from back in the day we've unearthed this one yeah. <laughs> without this, no pun intended yeah this was uh about 2011 or so. Yeah. I remember when this came uh, out. When this broke, yeah. I, I wanted to die. So what we're going to do is we'll probably, we'll exit we'll, from this. Yeah, we're going to play this for we'll play you. play the whole thing. Please watch it, okay? And Pay attention. For those of you at home, we will give you a summary who are listening who are not watching sure. at the end. But please, everyone, just watch this. Hang uh, on, hang technical on. Technical difficulties. We're I did not strip the audio. We are having technical... Give us two seconds. We're having technical issues with the audio here. Give us and two. I don't know why. Nothing's muted. Everything is fine. Uh, someone stripped the audio out, didn't they? No, this is on mute. Uh, give us a second again. Yeah. Yeah, no, I did not strip the audio. All right, I take it back. Well, then. You stripped the. I don't somebody, know. I can't anyway, make a joke. I guess. We, now we have to. We have to. You have to have audio for this. Well, then. You need that feeling. You need that, that, that feeling. What I can do is I can actually play it. Oh, you're gonna as that, long as we don't talk. No, that doesn't help. You just let's do a USB thing or something. Give me a. Yeah. I will give you a USB drive, guys. Bear with us, okay? How is that gonna help? If you give me the oh, original then you can file, just play the original file. Yeah, not this one you put together. Oh, okay. Once again, proof that we do these things live. Hang on a second, guys. F it, we'll do it live. Yeah. Um, why don't I give you a super chat to answer while I do this? Okay, please do. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, super chat this is how we improvise yeah, this is how we improvise um, I will make a petition to the government of Ukraine to accept white South Africans oh you actually mentioned this last time mm. they won't laugh at you mm. uh, Jonathan Case will you open a parlor account we're looking at alternative media sure uh, just a friendly reminder to do a Conquering Australia documentary. Thank you, Jack Bryan. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Bjarn Hall, Petrol Money for Future Adventures. Thank you. Awesome. Just a guy. I'm considering buying a OnePlus phone. In your opinion, is it safe to buy a Chinese phone in regards to my data? Sorry for my broken English. Yeah, look, um, I actually, I, I went to the OnePlus offices. I've met with the people at OnePlus. They got a bunch of foreigners working there. They're Chinese? Yeah. Oh. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a Chinese owner. Oh, okay. I went to the, actually in Shenzhen, uh, and I was going to interview them and all that, but it kind of fell through at the end of the day, um, which kind of sucks. But I did go into their offices and meet everyone there and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what to think. It's They've always billed themselves as kind of being like the most powerful, non-branded phone, if that makes sense. So it's just as good as uh, whatever. And they used to be a partnered with Oppo or something. I think, in all honesty... If you can avoid buying any kind of Chinese phone, I know old phones are made in China. That's the that's the thing, though, is even your Apple iPhone is made in China. So it's all about the company. Do a bit of research into the company. Who runs the company? And uh, for instance, you know that although Apple produces all of its phones in China, the company structure, the heads of the company, etc., are not beholden to the CCP. They pander to the CCP a lot. What they'll do is like in order to curry favor with the CCP, um, to have market share and also to continue to produce their phones in China. They will censor things on the Chinese version of the store, but they won't do the same in the USA and other countries, you know. But the actual CEOs and the, the people that control the company are not Chinese citizens, and so they're not 
you know, under the thumb of the CCP. So do a little bit of research and figure out who's running OnePlus at the moment. And that should be your deciding factor because if they're not Chinese, and the, I'm talking about the CEO and the controlling partners, if they're not Chinese, they don't have to do everything that the CCP says. And that's the important part because if the CCP goes to Apple and says, you must give us all of the data and information about these people, whoever they are, X, Y, Z, um, who use your products, and we want to listen, listen in on their microphones and stuff, if it's a Chinese company, they have to say yes, but Apple can say piss off, just like they say piss off to the FBI when they ask for stuff, you know, it's a different right. thing. Okay, I will answer some super chats if I get there ready. Now, a little disclaimer, I put my spit video on there, oh, and then did? I also put the, because they have audio too, oh, they both have and audio. then that one, and you can just double check and see if they work. Okay. Um, Tornado Bricks says, show us the Mao portrait, you sexy milk dogs. We did, and did you like it? I bet you did. <laughs> uh, you had Denise says, appreciate the UK ambassador. Uh, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is it? Are they both in one or is it two separate? Uh, two separate ones. So what's the other one? Uh, that one's called. I don't know. You're gonna have to figure it out. It's probably this very long Small MP4 one. of a year. Long? <laughs> are you being sarcastic? No, I'm being serious. What? The name. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you meant the size. I was like, oh, no. Great. Anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, Julian Colvis says, "My girlfriend and I just died laughing at the fucking moss." <laughs> Heiko Mas is from our neck of the woods, which somehow made it even funnier. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Uh, Alexander Carter says, for my favorite YouTube dudes. And thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, J Man Nice Guy 1492. Is it too late to ask this? I just watched Sea Milk's old wedding videos and cried. Oh, thank you. Uh, why do they draw your blood at the marriage registration office? Okay, so before you get married. Uh, they did it to me too. Yeah, I yeah. did it to everyone. Yeah. They draw your blood to check if you have AIDS or any sort of problems that might go into your child because yeah. they try to prevent anyone that ha that might have birth defects in your future child from reproducing more or less yes i don't think they'll physically stop you especially if you're a foreigner mm -hmm. what they'll do though is be like you have so and so of this birth defect uh, potential you're a carrier of this um, yeah. in your blood and then we recommend that you don't have a kid if you're in the countryside they can definitely definitely prevent you from having a child yeah um, or you know force you to have an abortion or sterilize you and things like that which also, still happens families would also cancel the wedding for sure if for they sure. found out that there's a chance of it's having down syndrome or something it's such a shit show and it's so mm -hmm. cutthroat there like the whole mm -hmm. wedding procedure and marriage procedure in china that people want to prevent that kind of stuff yeah whereas we're like dude i like i love this girl yeah, exactly. You know, like this is because our our families are not marrying into the Chinese family, whereas in China you're marrying the whole family. Yeah. So that's kind of how it works. It's like accountability. Did you figure it out? We are having issues with audio. And it's uh, uh, yes. I think that I think the original one will probably work now. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's Just pull uh, up the original. You're gonna have to bear with me again here. Yeah. Continue. Okay. Some more. I'll, I'll get it sorted out eventually, guys. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry for making you cry about those videos. Um, hopefully it wasn't because they're so bad. But yeah, yeah uh, our next... videos are pretty bad back then. Let's be honest. They are. Uh, Ninja Ninja Master thoughts on Neo. I'm not going to invest. I don't know how people trust Chinese companies to build cars, let alone self-driving cars. Yeah, wow. I mean, like, I'll be honest with you, they've come leaps and bounds. But I wouldn't never, I'd never drive a Chinese car. No, me neither. Um, they're just not up to spec it yet. Why? Why? That doesn't make any sense. Give me a second. Oh, okay. I'm you figuring figured it this out. out. I'm figuring it out. Sorry, we're using VLC and it's being jank as hell. Mm-hmm. Jank as hell. What if yeah, I there you go. This one? Try that one. Okay, guys, please, let's let's see if there's some audio here. Yes, but it's very loud. It's okay, just take it down a little yeah, bit. It's fine. I will, I will. Take okay. it on. So yeah. we're finally back on track okay. here, guys. We've unearthed. Okay, yes, we've unearthed things. Let us hit it. Sinatomjulatalawe 
我们现在通过镜头呢，可以看到这个东西啊，长得非常像一个菌类。那这个两边呢，都是有这个蘑菇头的形状，上面呢是有一个我们可以看到像嘴巴的东西，而下方呢则是一个小孔，是直接通透的，摸上去啊是非常的光滑，呃，感觉非常像一个肉类。那我们用尺子呢也大概量了一下，这个东西的身长呢也大概就在十九公分左右。呃，刚才来的比年龄大几，有八十多岁的。从来都没见过这，上网查了后，这叫太岁吗？何先生告诉我们说，他在网上呢是查看了相关的信息，发现太岁这个东西呢，在民间呢是俗称肉灵芝，而我们呢也是在网上呢也是查阅了相关的信息，发现这个肉灵芝呢之前啊在我国的多个城市呢是已经被发现过，而同时呢这个东西呢比较适合在我们陕西的秦岭山脉是成长的，由于它这个生长的环境特殊，一般呢都是深埋在底下，那么很难呢被人们。发现的，而同时呢，我们了解到这个肉灵芝呢，在网上呢也是有很多的说法。有人传说啊，秦始皇当时啊要寻找这个长生不老的药，发现这个肉灵芝呢就是这个药材的其中之一。还有人说啊，李时珍在《本草纲目》记载药类当中啊，这个肉灵芝呢也是其中的之一。何先生表示呢，今天是周末，他先暂时的将这个摸上去肉乎乎又像植物东西啊，搁置到家里。明天呢，会和我们的记者一起去寻找这个植物学家，来对这个东西呢做出一个科学的鉴定。那么也希望大家能够在明天的同一时间继续收看我们的《西安零距离》。零距离记者段青岩凤。Right, right, right, right. So, okay, yes, this is this is old, like we said. Hey, it doesn't matter. There's yeah. a reason we brought this up. Yeah, there's some there's some stuff to be learned here. Let's first of all, for those those of you listening at home, yeah, you've got this this pretty young um, presenter.、Mm -hmm. You know, she's on the site reporter in Xi'an. In Xi'an, you know, Xi'an's our new favorite Ch Chongqing. Yeah.、Um, so <laughs> anyway, she's on the ground in Xi'an, and she goes to this village where they found this mysterious mushroom、mm. that they've dug up. Yes. And so they're examining it and talking about like how. They, Touching、yeah, it. Yeah. It, it. They're、it's、saying、meaty. yeah, it's meaty, slimy, and they're saying like how it's、uh, probably this. Kind of mushroom which has very special medicinal、right. properties and can only be grown in certain places. That's why it was buried because of the climate and all this. And it's a male masturbator. It's like a flashlight.、Mm -hmm. It's one of those. It's literally know, a knockoff flashlight. Yeah, it's it's a it it's a fake you know vagina. So what probably、uh, <laughs> so what probably happened was some dude was like scared of getting caught or something、yeah. and buried it out back、yeah. out in the countryside in Xi'an. It's life, dude.、Yeah. Like he. This is national news, by the this, way. Yeah, this is national. This is in Xi'an. This is not some tiny, tiny little no, village thing.、No. Now the thing is. The reason we want to throw this in there, number one, it's hilarious as yes, hell. Yes. But number two, the the best part of this is the, the Chambadua half-ass aspect of this because、yeah. when they went in there, it's not much of a news story just to say, oh, we found this thing. They, they, this woman truly believes it's a mushroom. Yeah. And so does all so, so do all these people that have never seen something like this. Yeah. yeah. And bless their innocent little hearts. But I know. To make it a news story, they have to go all in. Oh <laughs> well.、Yeah. yeah. So pull up one of these quotes. Um, It says it's hard to be discovered by humans. At the same time, we discovered this plant has many stories online. So they've done some investigative journalism.、Yeah. They're literally talking about a fake badge here.、Yeah. There is a rumor that Emperor Qing Shi, while looking for a secret to longevity, found this herb to, to be one of its、um, to be one of its important, important. ingredients. They literally went、yeah. into Emperor Qing Shi freaking lore about fake vaginas. I know, it's guys.、Ridiculous. They love this. Above it has something that looks like lips, and on the other side it has a small hole that goes through to the other side. It's like when you're saying these words,、yeah. you don't think it will dawn on you. Touching it <laughs> is, is very means <laughs> giving the feeling of a type of meat. <laughs> okay. The the last quote's my favorite. This slimy, meaty object. Yeah, exactly. They measured it.、Yeah. They fondled it. They touched it, and、yeah. they had to go all in and say, "No, this is actually an important part of Chinese medicine."、Here. Yeah. You know, we've always had this ancient medicine, this this wild mushroom. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of it's just just hilarious. But now,、um, the next thing, which is also old, but don't worry, it's got a very modern counterpart, which we we will talk about, is、um, again we have some Chinese military CCTV、uh, military propaganda. Now I want you to watch this very closely. Okay, we have a fighter jet, a J-15 or something. A J-10. Is it a J-10? Looks like.、So. Yeah. Okay, firing off a missile and then bam, blows up an enemy. That looks、fighter. very familiar. Well, I mean, this this is like showing how powerful the Chinese military is, you know. And then,、uh, if you look closely, it's actually a, oh a scene from Top Gun. Oh, it's the exact same. Well, look,、scene. see the explosion of the plane. It's 
you know, it's when they shoot the, what do they call it? A MiG-29 or MiG-27 or some nonsense. Sure. You know, um, it's Didn't the they have like a blow by blow? I think they might. Once again, in slow motion. Let's see. Is this where we get to see the side by side? Yep. Hey, at least they mix up the other footage, like on the way. Yeah, on the way they they used whatever. But Whoa. yeah, you can see it. It's so Top Gun. To give context, like okay, people say who cares? This is literally mm-hmm. a propaganda piece from yeah. CCTV, China Central Television, to show how awesome their fighter jets are, and they freaking use Top Gun. I know Top Gun. Now the reason they do this is not only just the Chabador thing. Yeah. Okay, but on top of that. They rely on the fact that the majority of the Chinese people, because of the, the censorship, haven't actually seen Top Gun. No. You know, and it's this actually, is for a domestic audience. Yeah, it's for a domestic audience. It's not supposed to have been seen by the it's, outside world. Can I say something? This is why I hope you guys really appreciate our content. Is we can <laughs> give you insight onto the domestic stuff. Because the stuff they show the West is already ridiculous enough. Yeah. The stuff for the domestic audience is unbelievable. Apparently, a CCTV representative said the broadcaster couldn't immediately comment on the similarity. <laughs> And guess what? They never have. <laughs> yeah, that was like, from quite a while ago. Uh, oh, do you anyway. want to do the... the you, you we should probably do that. the follow-up first, okay. and then we'll, we'll go back to your one, because your, your one's hilarious. Sure. I don't know if it's... You didn't... Did you not? I don't know if you gave that one to me, bro. I, so, I certainly did. Well, right. what we can do is at least... Uh, you want me to see if I can pull it up? Yeah. Okay, sure. You're going to have can to do that thing question? again. Yeah, give us a... Um, Jeremiah Johnson says, The finest core is light with the bluest peaks for serpents, serpents at eye. Sea milk, come to your senses, please. I want to see you kick the bad habit of drinking unrefrigerated swill. Yes. JK, is it beer back in the menu? Uh, once, yes. once, once every two weeks. Yeah, or we're so. doing this thing. It's called the uh, Cars in Playboy. Yeah. And we drink during that, and I will have. You can actually run time. that ad. Yeah. Why don't you run that ad while I look for this? I like how you call it an ad. It's not really an ad. Not it's an what ad. We do. It's not an ad. Watch, okay. Check out this cool promo. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, seriously, though, for a second, please watch this i think you're gonna like it this is a new thing that that we've both started and we're going to be doing it maybe once every two weeks over on our other channel let's do it but i mean this this is a good advert you know why because yeah. it shows you that you're going to be broken down fixing your own car on the side of the road especially if you're a woman i don't think they understood marketing <laughs> back then. it's like this is a good car if you can fix it yourself doing something naughty today yeah this is kind of bizarre so let's crack it open what do you think yeah okay let's do it all Um, right i just also want to point out that the woman on the cover is 50 years older than she was there (laughs) wait a minute all right so she's probably in her 20s there or Uh, no maybe let's assume she's 20. let's say she's 20 so she's 70 now she's just ruined the fantasy for everyone here (laughs) i know i just had to point that out. so we have the system that beats the system we, we have to, you know, there's a lot of alcohol out There's booze there. and cigarettes everywhere. It's like that's all people did back mm. then. These are the Ballantines loyalists. Oh, yeah, now nice. we're talking. Okay. Sebring? That's a Sebring? I've got to say, that's oh. probably one of the ugliest pair of pants I've ever seen. I'll be honest, I'm looking at his, like, velour shirt. <laughs> and he's got that, like, scarf. Yeah. What do you call that? The caftan or something? It's, I don't know what I don't it's know. called. He's got one know. of those. Yeah. $10. Wow. That's crazy how cheap stuff was, eh? Mm. No! Wow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I ran it upside down. Yeah. Okay. okay, we're back, guys. Uh, sorry. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little Hey, you don't thing. have to apologize. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think they got the idea of what we were, what we're doing there, right? Yeah. We're doing that every two... Of course. Every two weeks or whatever. What? <laughs> Jet disconnected. Oh, movies. man. We're having lots and lots of technical difficulties Dude, today. we're like overlords of each other. That was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah we were. That. that was awesome. Anyway, um... The video that we're going to show you, which is directly related to that whole Top Gun thing, um, is something that we covered previously. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring up an image here because for us to organize a video in last minute, for some reason, it slipped through the cracks. Even though we do spend a lot of time preparing for this stuff, for some reason, it just didn't make it in. Give me a second here. Um, here we have a photo, and this is kind of difficult for me to do Certainly here. Hope we're still alive. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure we are. Why didn't you answer another super chat? Okay, yeah, dude, it shut everything down because yeah. it logged us out. Wonderful. By the way, it does this uh... every time. It says we're live, so let me. Okay, good stuff. Let me go to our images thing. How Pictures. do I go in the room? Oh, look at this very interesting picture we have in the background. That is not the one that we're going to be showing you, by the way. Um, I will bring that one up in a second. It's frustrating. Disappointed. Disappointed. <laughs> See, yeah. I didn't strip that out. You can actually play that now. Yeah, that's true. 
Um, give us a second here, guys, please. This is so awesome. And now I get to remove that picture and add a new one. So if I click this. And I think I'm back inside. You are. Okay, so please continue with the super chat. <laughs> okay. Um, hopefully we were not out for too long, guys. Oh, thank goodness. It's, let me just get back to it. Um, in a very recent military propaganda piece put out by the, the Chinese Air Force, once again, they used Hollywood footage. And um, here we can take a look, get us out of there. Oh, uh, I can't. Ooh. Never mind. I can't. Thana, um, Thanos, this <laughs> out of there, bro. They used um, clips from the Transformers movie, Fallen Angels or Revenge of the Fallen, whatever it's called, one of those Transformers things. I don't they, know what they the hell used, those are called. Those are they terrible. They used movies. footage from The Hurt Locker mm -hmm. and they used footage from The Rock. Now, right. there's a very iconic scene of like a missile blowing, well, blowing up the, the Rock, you know, sure. Alcatraz or whatever. So they made this kind of mock attack on uh, Guam. Yeah. Okay. And they showed this long range bomber of theirs, like basically blowing it, blowing up a military base, an American military base. But they used Hollywood footage again. And this is this year, September. Yeah, this September. Is, it was no in September. It was September here. 2020. So you can say, oh, look, they used Top Gun footage. It's such a laugh. It's so silly because they did that like back, back in 2011 were, yeah. or something. But guess what? They did it this year again. So the, the thing I wanted to bring up is mm -hmm. not that. I mean, who gives a shit if China steals footage? They do this all the time. The problem is they're literally using it for propaganda to show that they could destroy the U.S. militarily. Yeah. They're using American films. Yes. They they're can't even American shoot their own propaganda footage. Because you know what happened? And I, I'm going to, I could probably put money on this. Yeah. Some general said, we need to have a propaganda piece about our military of this, whatever Air Force, whatever plane we're using now. Yeah. And it went down the chain of command, and they blew it all on by Joe and Cognac and hookers. <laughs> sure. I'm not even joking. You guys think that's a joke. No, this is sure. probably what happened. Chain of command goes down, 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 and they ended up stealing freaking Hollywood footage because it's going to look better anyway. Yeah. Right? Of course. And they just didn't have the budget to make it themselves. We're talking about a country that literally thinks mushrooms are fake vaginas. So, you know, Fake vaginas are mushrooms. F Vice versa. Yeah. My apologies. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, this is this is what happened here. And they continue yeah. to do so. And that's the biggest issue. So another funny little uh, thing which is directly related well, to Well, let me set this up. Us, yeah. So I was surprised last year when I made it on to Phoenix TV, which is a Hong Kong-based thing. But mm -hmm. it's now bought out by mainland China. Yeah, it's mainland Chinese. So oh, yeah. they they didn't link me. They didn't like actually give me credit or anything. Yeah. But they did spit on me. Yes. Roll the clip. Okay, let's do this. Let's uh, get ourselves, make sure everything's working again. Do we have our, our little thing going on here yet? Is our things actually going to work? Yes. Recently,美国有个博主叫陆黎段视频吐槽他中国媳妇儿在网上传播的还挺广的啊，就这个渣男啊，比方说他说他媳妇儿睡前一定要洗澡，亲戚爱串门，太粘人，爱省钱。<laughs> so that is the time that I got spit on on uh, Chinese TV. Yeah. Now, the, the context is basically I made a video, a, a satire video, yeah. about how I hate my Chinese wife, even though I go on a monologue at the end for a minute about how much I love her. And actually, yeah. the cultural differences are what made us love each other so much. Right. And it's actually a pretty touching thing if you watch it all the way through. But China, of course, of course, only takes my satire, kind of like Kim Jong-un-esque, yeah. like mis misunderstanding. Absolutely. When I'm making jokes about like, Oh, she gets mad when I don't take a shower before bed. Or, oh, like she gets, I, uh, she wants to clip coupons and save so much money. They legitimately think I hate my wife. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're they. It's so autistic. It hurts. Yeah. So they go all in with this whole thing, and then the guy spits on me. Yeah, I know. On then national it, TV. Later, I think it was it was either him or the company went on to say that because a lot of people complained. Oh, they I did? didn't tell people to complain. Nice. Uh, but a lot of people complained on my behalf, and they said that he didn't spit. He was. It's a traditional kind of Chinese sound that they. It means like so they tried to say it was like che, like che, yeah. like like whatever. But it's clear as he goes. No, he, yeah, he's pee. It's like a yeah. like a Elmer Fudd no, spitting sound. No, he totally sound. spit on you. He spit, totally on, spit me, on you. I mean, it was actually fun. But <laughs> the thing is, yeah, the the whole funny part of that episode of that Phoenix TV thing when they rip tear apart my video. Well, yeah. they don't even show my video. I just show my face all the yeah. time. 
is that they completely misunderstood the satire and joke of the video. Yeah. They used it almost as a propaganda piece to be like, look at how these foreigners are not compatible with our Chinese women. Because yeah. then he goes on this kind of serious monologue later about like, you know, it's just not, it doesn't work Didn't out. Can you say something about what if you buy a, like a washing machine and it's yeah. this or that, some nonsense? Some, some, he made some analogies yeah. that are just very, very bad things. And it was just mm. so tone deaf and autistic that he yeah. just didn't understand, you yeah. know, the video. And I guess maybe his writers didn't understand sure. it. Very good example of how this works, though. Yeah. Humor is not a, a priority. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I think what we've managed to prove so far in this video, and there are countless stories, we don't have enough time for this, mm. but... Um, is that the Chinese media really mm -hmm. doesn't get things right very often. They actually make huge, mis they have huge misconceptions about the West. Sure. And um, I, I also have to say that, you know, you get a lot of people out there that are putting out this message that Western media only ever portrays bad things about China and et cetera, et cetera. And, and a lot of the times it's actually true. A lot of sure. Western media only focus on the negatives. Guess what? They focus on the negatives of everywhere. You don't see Western media saying how amazing um america is do you it's always about the problems no. it's always about the problems but if you look at chinese media they don't ever have anything good to say about the west it's just as bad so you know it's there's a big balance going on here guys so don't you worry about that now we're going to do a couple of super chats and then we're going to move on to something a little more dour in our world news yeah unfortunately well, you don't have to well, we'll try to make it not dour. Bring the mood down a little bit. Let's we can keep it up. And keep it right down. <laughs> <laughs> Shove that fucking mood yeah, down. Get it throat. down. Get it down. Okay. Keep it down. Uh, David Pay says, "I died <laughs> okay. about the vagina story." Yeah, I mean that is hilarious, and it is. It's just very indicative of how ridiculous things. Can Dude, get you know, there's a bunch of people calling us prudes in like Victorian era prudes, but not only did we read a Playboy. But we just talked about fake vaginas. Yeah, there we go. All right. mm. Jordan T. Russo, have you guys been keeping up with the CCP-like tactics occurring through Victoria, Australia during COVID this year? Uh, last few months got real scary. Actually, don't know. No, I mean, look, I know right now, as usual, Australia is under a lot of pressure from the CCP. I know CCP, that, yeah. And they're trying to blame Australia for all, the, all their problems, as usual. So, yeah. whatever. We'll keep an eye on that, because we know... Although Australia belongs to China, I know that there's still a few of you out late. there like still fighting for your freedom. It's not too and, late. You know, maybe you can secede and, and create your own separate country from China, just like Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be we'll successful. See. Like a little yeah. part of Australia. I got a lot, a lot of hope from, for Australia, you know? Good. Uh, 42 Fab, or bro, why am I always late to these? Stay awesome, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you for um, joining us. Tara Doherty, did you see the Wall Street Journal video where during the Chinese holiday, tourists were visiting Wuhan last month? Yeah. Yeah, there was this Wall Street Journal. By the way, we made a foible. We said, like, I think you said Wall Street Journal was, like, liberal or something. It's very, it's quite conservative. Is it? That doesn't matter. The foible we both made was thinking that... Um, that these articles were the voice of the Wall Street Journal, mm -hmm. when in fact they were their editorials, right? Oh, their opinion editorial. pieces. So if somebody's like supporting the CCP, it's an editorial usually. That's where we screwed up. So our apologies. Okay. Okay. Um, so if they're not saying, a no apology from me. Man, mainstream media is a bunch of garbage. Of course, but you can't. <laughs> there are yeah. good editorials, yeah. and there are some decent we, outlets. And yeah, right? we we should be as accurate as we, we can. Should be. So from that point of view, okay. Sure. I uh, concede. Dustin Pearson, our man. I mm -hmm. uh, love the Japanese delivery scooter. Oh, that's The series <laughs> yeah. is not over yet. Yeah, that's coming. Made mm -hmm. my day for you. Uh, you guys never fail to entertain. Please stay healthy. Looking to a better future. Love you guys. Thank we you. We love you too, man. Yeah, you too. Uh, Wu Mao. <laughs> they only pay me 0.5 euros now. So now I have 1.5 debt. We appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Wu Mao. Appreciate yeah. it. Mm. Um, what level of HSK you two have reached? And thanks for the Playboy memories. I the I last test I took HSK, HSK five. I never took my HSK six. I never did an HSK test, but what I did do was I studied up to um, Chujiban, you know, which is intermediate in Shenzhen University. So I've got an intermediate. What does that mean? Well, you got Room and Ban, which is like beginners. And then you get intermediate, and then obviously you get advanced. So I'm, I've got, a, I'm officially certified top of my class for intermediate um, <laughs> Mandarin Chinese. But of course, I lived many more years and learned a lot more. So I don't know what my HSK is, but uh, okay. I'm not brilliant in chi at Chinese by the longest stretch of the imagination. But I can speak and I can read and I can write. So a fair amount. You're being humble. 
Um, his name, by the way, is Wabasa Li, Li Gang. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the that guy that like there. ran over those poor, <laughs> poor people like roller. And then he tried to flex that his dad was like yeah. important, which yeah. actually works most of the time. It does normally work in China. Yeah. Uh, Winnie Lee, thank you very much. That was thank very you. generous. Thank Appreciate you. it. And we'll save save a couple more of those after yeah. this dower. Why do you have to bring up this? Well, we got to do this worldview dower thing. Okay. It's it's the only. Okay. Can I preface this? Sure. We are not talking about... You're about to see some stuff that's pretty disturbing and pretty upsetting. Yeah. And don't tune out. I mean, we're not going to show anything graphic. No, no, But the discussion, is very, the discussion is very sad. Sure, sure. And the reason we're doing this is it's a personal case. Mm-hmm. And there's no reason for us to talk about this other than, oh, China bad bullshit. That's yeah. not why we're doing it, no. though. The reason we're bringing these up is there's a lot to learn. Yes. About Chinese society, specifically rural society. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not to learn to be negative. It's to learn to bring awareness to it. So well, let's talk about it. It's even in the Global Times, believe it or not. We're is... getting a lot of noise. I'm going to open those windows again, okay? You okay, can go, ahead and go for it. it um, we also don't... You know why we're getting a lot of noise? Because you kicked our light out. Oh, shit. Sorry. Another proof that we do this live. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, um... Maybe turn this on, then. It's black behind us. Well, you can just turn our light that you kicked out on, and it'll work. I can do that, too. <laughs> hey, why don't you talk? Okay, yeah, sorry, guys. You know, this is some behind the scenes for you um okay let's look at this um headline which is in the global times surprisingly but again the global times is usually um takes always. on the role of <laughs> always always takes on the role of just being this horrible teenager who lashes <laughs> out at, at the west and says nah nah you and this yeah. but okay this is a very sad very very sad story about um this woman who was married in fact we've got the notes we can read we can read a bit more but i'll give you the gist of it so this woman was uh, married into this family and uh, she was a little slow that's what the family said they paid 130,000 mental, not mental problems she was just, just, just uh, maybe a little bit slow sure um she had uh, was they bought her for 130,000 uh, yen which you is, have to explain what that means in How do you buy some? Well, in China, you do have this kind of bride price. Dowry. Yeah. Dowry. Well, it's actually called a bride price. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think dowry is the other way around. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, the thing is, you do have this this bride price situation where when you get married, and this is this was actually a shock to a lot of my uh, foreign friends who got married to Chinese women, mm-hmm. is that the family that you're marrying into expect you to pay to marry their daughter. Like, and it can be a small amount. I, I mean, one of my friends only paid 10,000 RMB. Another one of my friends had to pay like half a million RMB. Sure. Because it was a rich family. Yeah, they expect so more. So they expect more. And it's just how it is. Because think about it. In China, it's this agrarian society. And when your son leaves, well, if your son, um, your son is basically more valuable because what's going to happen is he, he's going to look after you. Even though he marries someone else, he still looks after his parents. And if you have a one child only because of the one child policy and your daughter gets married into a family, she leaves the family and then there's no one to support you, right? So they need something back. So mm. it's kind of worked into the situation that when a, a girl's married out, the family expects money, right? you know, for right. that, for the privilege of letting them. It's, it is what it is. It's a older, more traditional kind of a thing, which, you know, like it, love it, hate it. That's how China runs. So anyway, they paid uh, a hefty especially for a rural area, some. 20 grand US. Yeah, 20,000 US dollars. Um, That's big. Yeah, especially for a more rural place. Yeah. Um, and then they found out that she was infertile, mm. so she couldn't have children. And this, of course, enraged this rural family, so they abused her, they beat her, they used to lock her outside in winter. Mm. Uh, starved her. Starved her. She ended up 30 kilograms. Yeah, she went from 80 kilograms when she got married, uh, and when she died, she was 30 kilograms. So that's why it's like 70, 65 pounds. Yeah, it's ridiculous, okay? So this poor woman was abused, assaulted, wasn't allowed to see her family. Um, she only got to go back and see her family one time. Um, and then, you know, she basically got abused and beaten to death by both her husband and her in-laws. Mm. Savage. And it's disgusting. And, you know, you hear these horrible rural kind of stories in China often. It, it, yeah. You, yeah. It's kind of like the Wild West in those rural towns. Oh, it really is. You know, children are chained up in, yeah. in houses. Yeah, fed like and milk powder out of just, a dog bowl. It, it's just there's all sorts of crap that goes on, right? Abuse. Um, yeah. But here's the the kicker is that the people that murdered her only got three years. Okay, so when it finally, like, it actually went to court and stuff, they were given three years. And this is a big problem in China, is that when it's a domestic issue, so, and this has happened as well, where I've stopped fights on the street, where there's a man beating a woman up, like, Mm, severely, 
and nobody steps in because mm. oh that's that's a domestic issue and if you step in you'll get blamed for interfering yeah people with will a be domestic like, issue stay out of that stay yeah out of that you shouldn't be interfering yeah. with their that's what the cops issue. told me when i called the cops on the the man beating his wife next door to me yeah in inner mongolia yeah they were like just stay out they're like don't it's a family thing yeah and the problem is because there's this whole emphasis on it being a domestic issue it very often doesn't go into court and there have mm. been a couple of times recently like that woman who was set on fire by her ex-husband yeah. on a live stream that's yeah the next that, picture not the, no, the atrocity but her photos yeah of there. course we wouldn't show that um and also recently uh, a woman being beaten to death in public in mm. front of a whole bunch of people again this whole bystander effect crap in china where nobody steps in but the fact of the matter is it's a disgusting part again of uh Chinese society that has to change this whole idea of it's okay you can beat someone up because it's it's a domestic issue that's why that couple was arrested when they came to America remember yeah and they got into a scuffle outside their yeah, hotel. so there's a couple that fought in New York City on the street yeah um, I, it wasn't like a brutal fight or well anything. I mean they ended up like rolling they around, rolling around. It's, it's your typical yeah. typical couple fight you know yeah, that yeah. you see in China yeah. but they ended up both getting arrested and yeah. they, they were like no it's just we're fine we're yeah, cool it's... and they're like no you can't do that you yeah. can't fight they're each like, other they're like no no, no. We're, we're fine like yeah. it's just our own personal thing they're and like, then no. they were like no and they were afterwards like if the, the, the sort of Chinese travel agencies and stuff had to release a notice that like hey you know it is against the law to beat your wife or your husband yeah, when you're abroad public, yeah. you know don't do that save it for the hotel room um, you know that kind of thing <laughs> yeah so anyway yeah. what we're saying is um, there is a little bit of a silver lining here if I could say it in a way but it also shows the weakness of the system sure and that is because these murderers only and these tor torturous torturing murderers only got three years. In fact, the husband only got two, two, two years. Two probation. Yeah. Um, the internet blew up and was saying, like, screw that. Like, what yeah. the hell? So um, Mob justice. Yeah, th that's, that's the thing. It just shows you the rule of law in China is just Mickey Mouse. Like, literally, anything goes. That's the problem with the whole th uh, with the law in China. Anything goes, and if there's too much of a stink, then they'll change it or sure. whatever. It's just so changeable. It's like oh, this is it's a gray yeah. area. Yeah, oh, so... <clears throat> Because of this huge stink that was kicked up by like hundreds of thousands of people online, um, here's the official sort of WeChat notice saying that the case is going to be reopened and they're going to retry yeah. these people. Now, this is my issue is that mm -hmm. it's good that this happened. It's good that yeah. the, the mob justice actually brought out some good because the Internet can go crazy in China. And if things slip past the censors, because I ideally the Chinese government wants to censor this to death. Sure. But if it slips out too much, they have to do something about it. Mm to give the impression that they're a country of law, right? Yeah. So then the netizens, they go, you know what, China's, they don't question the system anymore. They yeah. go, our mob justice actually brought about change. Unfortunately, it's not democratic change. What it is, is a way to quash discussion. Yeah. It's a way to suppress uprisings. It's a way to calm down public opinion about this issue sure. in particular. This isn't gonna change systemically too much <laughs> no, in China no, no, because no. China, and I say this all the time, is not a country based on the rule of law. Things are subjective. So one person could get tried for something and another person could get tried for something. That trial means nothing. It yeah. depends on your connections. It depends on the severity of the situation if the government thinks that's a bad thing to do at the time. Yeah. If the government doesn't give a shit about that particular yeah. crime at the time. It depends on where you are. It yeah. depends on who you are, like I said. So without a rule of law, you're not going to see systemic change in Chinese society. And that's sure. the problem. The Communist Party of China can simultaneously be the most oppressive government you've ever lived under in your entire life if they yeah. want to be. Yeah. And can also completely turn a blind eye to some of the worst shit you've ever seen. So you it can, can be look a free. And you can freely be a scumbag. Oh, yeah. You can be a murderer. Yeah. You can walk around drunk as a coot on the streets, yeah, like yeah. beating up and kicking dogs and sure you know like being a complete piece of trash and beating your your wife and nobody mm. will ever step in to stop you no you know so so in that case like the society knew that it's wrong yeah but this is not enough and the you chinese know, government will just say here's a bone basically yeah, yeah exactly the thing is like when there's a big uproar over an injustice in china because you know chinese people are just like you and i they're human yeah, you know they also see injustices they don't like it um when you see this kind of injustice and a big uproar pops up if it's like a, a gripe like this which nobody can deny that this is bad how dare you give two years to someone who murdered their wife and treat um, them like an animal exactly starve to starve them. them to death lock them outside in winter when it's snowing and stuff and just being a piece of crap this is a legitimate complaint so they kind of addressed it but if you start kicking up a, a an uproar about yeah. injustice like that's, let's change the law yeah that's con that's connected to the government mm. then instead of action being taken 
That's when the censors roll in and start censoring any discussion of it online. Keywords get blocked. You know, nothing gets done. If you make too much of a stink about it, it's you that's going to end up in jail. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it works two ways, you know? So anyway. It really just, does. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, this is just to give some, some go, keep going. Yeah. Just to give a little, mm-hmm. uh, a little sad, little uh, memorial yeah. to her. This is a Tibetan woman that in Sichuan that was set on fire on a live stream yeah, on Douyin, ex, which is TikTok. Ex-husband, yeah. Uh, by her ex-husband, which is really messed yeah. up. Um, <clears throat> also, caused huge online discussion about uh, enacting some sort of and retribution. Al- and also, there's a lot of discussion online about uh, women's rights yeah. uh, in China because, you know... There are quite Women a, have it rough. They, they, a lot of people think that China's very progressive. And, Do they? You know, yeah. Who thinks that? Dude, like all these little G-bar suckers and stuff. They're always oh, going on yeah, about yeah, like yeah. The, sucking the G-bar of the CCP. Look right. how amazing the CCP is rising all these people out of Oh, it's such bullshit. Women have such stuff. a hard time in China. Yeah, it's so it, unequal. It's not even funny. Especially in if the rural If you're a feminist, areas. you would hate the CCP. Yeah, yeah It's absolutely. unbelievable. Absolutely. They, I know what you mean, though. They put, especially like let's say very very left-leaning people mm-hmm. younger people will put Mao Zedong on a pedestal if only for his like championing of the human rights women hold a path to sky yeah. bullshit propaganda yeah. that literally didn't amount to too much yeah the patriarchy and I not to bring this feminist kind of like talk but if you're an actual feminist you would really not be in favor of what happens in Chinese society to because women Chinese society is what you wish the western society was <laughs> you know what I mean it is a patriarchal <laughs> oppressive you know <laughs> Um, women earn less than men kind of a situation. It's, ba- it's, it's bad. It, it really my wife is is, will way. be the first person to tell yeah. you that. Yeah, in the it, work it really is. But what's happening now, thankfully, is we're hearing a lot more discussions about, you know, women's rights, which is something that needs to be addressed solely in China. In China. It, and like I said, especially in the rural areas, mm. because it doesn't matter what you hear about happening in Beijing and Shanghai. In rural Anhui or something, it's something completely different. The thing different. is, and I don't want to be so defeatist about this, but it mm. doesn't fucking matter. Mm. The thing is, you can't make these huge sweeping changes in China. There's a big top-heavy government, but it's so ingrained. Mm. It's so ingrained to just be like, okay, this is a flavor of the week issue, but then they won't deal with it anymore. It's not about feminism or whatever. This is about any any law in yeah. China can be really important today and completely nonsensical <laughs> tomorrow. You know, yeah. that's the problem. Anyway, speaking about today... <clears throat> That's the new phone, right? Yeah, no. Every, it's a new iPhone. Everybody's rushing out to get their iPhones um, because the iPhone 12 is out, you know? This one. <laughs> you bought a case because you can't get one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, I just want to salivate over this case. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, we did. We actually bought the yeah. iPhone. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's so, not here yet. Yeah. So anyway, the thing is, now that the iPhone's kind of out there... We wanted to remind you of the tragic, tragic story. Of... I want to, I almost said this is funny, but this is so <laughs> not funny it hurts. <laughs> Yeah, literally um, hurts. The kidneys. tragic, tragic, tragic story of the the Chinese man who sold a kidney to get an iPhone four and an iPad. Yeah, he was only like seventeen at the when time. He did it, right? So yeah, you can understand that. So yeah, he sold his kidney because he wanted an iPhone four so bad. And materialism mm. in China is pretty rampant. Like yeah. you can get judged if you don't have you. You don't want to be in the poor class. Very classist society for yeah. a people's republic. Yeah. So I mean, and he wanted an iPad to play Angry Birds, obviously. Yeah, because that was it, a thing. Yeah, especially you know when this happened. So anyway, he uh, contacted, a, he was offered money in one of these chat groups by black market organ harvesters or whatever. and uh, they were, Which exists, by the way. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, because the yeah. story is true. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he uh, went and had some illegal surgery done to remove one of his kidneys. And, you know, he very famously said in all his blog posts, hey, I only, like, I've got two kidneys. I only need one. But, you know, I, but I need Apple products. Yeah, yeah. So he got his... Uh, I wonder know, if Apple ever made a statement about that. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Apple should at least help, <laughs> like, help like, him a little bit. Yeah, help the kid. Yeah, I know. It's like... Well, it's too late it's now. Tragic. What happened? So, anyway, they didn't do a very good... No he, shit. ...backyard surgery, and so they infected, ended up infecting his other kidney. Yeah. So he's now permanently bedridden right, and die. on dialysis. Yeah. But, hey, at least he's still got an iPhone 4 and, I, and an iPad 2. Original or whatever. Yeah, which you can't even update anymore no. and play I can't. I don't want to laugh about that. Yeah, no. Because imagine, like, the kid doesn't know what he's doing no. at that age, right? No, no, no. The reason we bring this up is just to prove that these things that you'd sometimes hear about in China whispered and hushed about, like, ho- ho- organ harvesting and mm. illegal this and that. Oh, no, it's thing. real. It really does exist. It does, you know? And so There's no beating around the bush there. It's empirical proof as well. Absolutely. Now, no more dower shit. No. I'm over this shit. Yeah. All right, done. so um, 
we've already played that, so we're good. So now we're gonna we're gonna do a little Q and A. Hopefully, yep. you guys answer some or ask some really nice. Yeah, guys. Questions. So it's a Q and A time where uh, we answer your questions and you question our right. answers. Uh, Winnie Lee, thank you. I already said thank you to you. Akuma, mm -hmm. Max, uh, Yumi. Technical difficulties, eh? <laughs> I think that gives us some charm. It's a live show, indeed. You know? What if it was like I, super polished? All I the time will strive like to make sure that doesn't happen again. Hey, relax. I think people can forgive us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks so much for the needed laughs, the content, too. See? So looks fine. Yeah. Um, Big Tech says, buy your couple of meat, buy, buy yourselves a couple of meat mushrooms for when you're traveling away oh, from boy. the wives. <laughs> wifeys. Um, it's okay. I, I'm still a Victorian prude when it comes to that yeah, kind of I've stuff. Been, I apologize. Yeah. I can get a good chuckle out of it though. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Super funny. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, we probably inspired some sales, if anything. Yep. Just don't bury him in the freaking yard and call the news. Well, no, it's obviously someone dug it it's up. It's probably his grandma or something, yeah, you know? Yeah, somebody buried it because they were ashamed or think maybe about they this, used though. it too much and it was not effective anymore. Or yeah, but they felt or... shameful. But the thing is, you know it was his grandma because they all live in the same house. Sure. She's digging up the garden. And she, she found goes, this. She's like, oh, how true. No, but yeah, that yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> And they called the news. We found this strange, mysterious mushroom. It was, that's what they call it, yeah. mysterious mushroom. Mis yeah, Xi'an mysterious mushroom. Uh, <laughs> one one says... What are some good Taiwanese news sources? Preferably the news focused on local news and things pertaining to Asia in general. Tired of slowly reading to find out it's propaganda. Thank you. Love you guys. Um, not sure. Maybe Taiwan news? <laughs> yeah, Taiwan news is good. Um, they, it, they publish our shit sometimes. So mm. I like them. Yeah, but. just go look at Taiwanese news outlets. Now, I have to say, you know, when I was living in China, mm -hmm. the first time I went to Taiwan, I was kind of appalled because the Taiwan news was kind of just like the Chinese news, but opposite because, you know, it's not, though. I know it's yeah. not, I know it's not, but you'd see the newspaper and they're like, China's bad, this China's mm. bad, that, but then you go into mainland China's Taiwan's bad, this yeah, Taiwan's yeah. bad, you know? So you have to always read between the lines of this stuff. The, the best thing about Taiwan is that they've got lots of different Correct. media outlets, Correct. just it's, like it's in the States, press. you have like Fox news and CNN and, and, and a million in between S and M Q Y C Y G yeah. or whatever. And everything in between. Yeah. Um, and, and you have influencers. Yeah, it's true. Right? It's true. Yeah. And Taiwan has a lot of people online because yeah. it's free internet. Yeah, the thing is, in worse. China, you do not. You only have one state media. Yep. And you have different flavors of it that it's all filters thing. down, but it's it comes from the same, the same source. Thing. And they're not allowed to stray away from any no. given narrative. No. So that's why Taiwan news is cool. You can go and take a look there. Yeah. Right. Mm. <laughs> people are to translate. Chinese people are translating what I just said. Oh, they are. So, thank you for that. Okay. Sometimes we we actually I, I say this too many times. I keep like showing a little bit too much skin here. Um, we <laughs> yeah. just break into Chinese sometimes. We forget people don't understand. Exactly. It's it's not cringe like you think. Like oh, I just spent so much time abroad. Like oh, look, I can speak Chinese. It's it's a habit. You get used to it's you a put, habit. And the, there are words like that ma, are better. Mafan. Ma Mafan's better than mm. troublesome. Nobody yeah. says freaking troublesome. It's like oh, this is really troublesome. Who you know? says it's that? Like, oh, I'm really having trouble with this. This is troublesome. No, it's, this it's is ma Mafan. Ma yeah, exactly. Um, mm. at, uh, th AJ says thanks guys thank mm -hmm. you Ab Abdigandi Sugal uh, how is China reacting to the new Xbox and PS5 they, most people do not play consoles yeah I mean it's not worth getting there to be yeah. honest um, like when they unban them I don't think it's even for sale right now in China uh, probably not but even when they unban them when, remember we went to go check out PS4 games we talked yeah. about this they the few games you can get are trash. Yeah, it's like some sports games and dude, some but not just, even good no, no, sports no. games like rando has off to, brand. It has to pass sensor board stuff, mm. and it, it's a Chinese only version that you get, yeah, yeah. which is annoying. And so the Chinese PSN store also has a very limited selection, and like if Big Brother's watching you, you know, you, yeah, it's not fun. No, mm. uh, Ryan Jones says I like that both of your jackets match your chairs. Cheers. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. notice that. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, my wife got this for me. Got Very a bit of black and white thing going on. A little here. black and white, a little gray and... Yeah, we actually yeah. we're both like opposing colors. If you see your shirt, it's gray. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah, we that did was not, not on purpose. <laughs> we are not trying to be like Oreos or whatever. <laughs> no. Anyway, um, yeah. that's about it. Is it? Yeah. It's all of them? That's it. Wow, thank you guys for sticking through with us on our episode 39 of our ADV podcasts. And uh, you can best catch us luck. again yeah. in two weeks' time. Yeah. And best of luck on all of your mushroom hunting journeys. Absolutely. Guys, speaking of mushrooms and vegetables in general, please, <laughs> please watch my video tomorrow. Only if you watch my video from yesterday, my no, Taiwan video. And I think, then after that, I think if you, you go watch Yeah, his watch his, his one for good facts and yes. like real life. It's, I mean, mine, we'll just watch mine to have a laugh. Yes. You're going to have a Do laugh. Do both. Yeah. And then you'll have a balance. Yeah, absolutely. Cannot wait to see you tomorrow in uh, my special, funny, ridiculous video. Um, but yeah. 
catch all the other usual stuff if you haven't seen the playboy thing yet guys, definitely check that out. i think I you're gonna you're gonna love it it's highly over, recommended it's over everyone, worthless whips. everyone keeps saying they're surprised at how much they yeah. enjoyed it it's one of those things that you see a thumbnail and a title and you're like i'm yeah. not gonna watch yeah. this this looks garbage but you'll watch it you'll like but it but Everybody so far who's actually watched it has enjoyed They're it. Like, and wow. we, we encourage you to come yes. and read a Playboy with us. Don't worry, the lewd stuff's cut out for the most part. Um, mm. and Not it's too just, much cut out. Though. It's just fun. It's, it's fun. just fun. Yeah, so hopefully what we'll do is we'll see you uh, soon. Mm-hmm. Have a fantastic weekend and whatever else.